R, mateys. Captain Divine here for your merchanting review. Okay, so for anyone who didn't click the video away yet, I won't be talking like this for the rest of it, no worries. So, play around ports, long awaited by many, and I've been playing it over the past few days, and I quite enjoyed it, and it's quite nice, but it is still a lot of waiting, and the Eastern Lands sound exciting, but you can only look at them from some map. So you can clearly see there's something missing, and people hoped for a bit more. But what it didn't miss is a large impact on the economy. Let's check out what happened. At RuneFest 2011, player-owned ports were first announced, and I put this screenshot here from a video by RuneShark about to talk on the future updates. Mudmark didn't mention much here, but it was enough to draw a few major conclusions. He said that you would be building your own port, that you would attract crews and send them off to far places to get back your recipes. And with these recipes and your finishing skills, you would be able to make 85 up to 99 gear. Now, as you can already see, this would be a massive update. And building your own port and the name player on ports were enough to indicate a decent construction level would probably be needed, considering it being a high level update. And at some point it was actually confirmed that you would need 91 construction, that would be the highest requirement for the player on ports, but uh, it seems like they just completely scrapped the whole construction idea from it. Um, the finishing skills indicated smithing and crafting and perhaps some others you don't really know. And then 85 to 99 gear meant, obviously meant that the current armor market would be crashing immense loads. Now this was over a year ago. It was known for so long and yet a lot of people still rage about losing money. It's just quite unbelievable. Now personally I knew it was scheduled for 2012, but with the evolution of combat delayed by two months, I didn't expect it to be released this year anymore, until this behind the scenes special edition uh, was posted. Now. Player on ports were second on the list here, indicating it would, it would most likely be the second update of December. They didn't release any new information about the update itself here, but it was suddenly right there on my doorstep. Now, the Evolution of Combat was about to be released, and I had sold an investment to make place for investing in Torva and Pernix, which were all an all-time low because of EOC panic. I was making some great profit already, and then this post came out. Now, I don't think I've ever ran to the Grand Exchange this fast. I was literally freaking out. I instantly sold all my Torvan Pernix, thinking I was about to halve in price, and then almost nothing happened. I overestimated people. They didn't even know that the player-owned ports would bring along this high-level gear, and it took days for the prices to start decreasing and for people to realize what was going to happen. Now, luckily, I still made over 200 mil in the investments, as you can see here in the screenshots. But damn, this could have gone so wrong. It was pretty incredible. Next up, I wanted to talk about rares, and for that I picked the Red Party at Graph as an example. Now the reason I'm picking this is because usually when big updates occur, this has a lot of impact on the value of rares. Now, uh, in this case, an entire section of the market is getting its ass kicked badly, which is armor. And uh, after this update, armor is pretty much going to be uh, worth a lot less than a new armor would have to take over but uh, Jagex said that it would not be tradable. Now, as you can see here this is the point at which uh, the special edition news post com that comes out and it makes rares rise slightly. The crafts can pretty much be overlaid, they're just really similar with other rares. And uh, then after that, right before EOC, they take a very deep crash. But at this point you still know when the player on ports come out armor is going to hell so you're like almost guaranteed this is going to rise and then when EOC is out uh, probably had to rise like a hundred mil in a day like out of nowhere a massive rise now this is mainly EOC based uh, it doesn't have much to do with player and ports I assume but after that you can start seeing how there is an upward trend uh, towards 1400 mil after that simply because of the player on ports like more people start realizing about it and they start investing in rares and cashing out their armor just because they're afraid about this stuff of course and uh, because rares are a much safer long-term investment now what i really love about these live graphs is that you can perfectly explain everything that happens on them as you can see here uh, on friday they usually make this behind the scenes videos and jagex did and they explained a bunch of things about the player on ports and this caused people to mass buy rares and this made them rise quite a lot to pretty nice peaks and they of course went back down because it was a pretty big panic but ever like after that they're just rising again 
and I've been making some great money on these, but I've said enough about rares. The behind the scenes post for December came out and it cleared up quite a few things. No construction first of all. Yeah, I mentioned that before and I think Jagex really missed a massive opportunity with this uh, to blow new life into the skill again. But oh well. Uh, after that they mention level 90 and at least one out of a bunch of skills is needed for this update. But the only interesting ones out of these merchanting wise are Herblore and Prayer. Next up they mention the gear we already knew about, uh, but only level 85, even though Jagex previously said 85 up to 99. We already expected the crafting and smithing to be involved, but quite surprising one here, uh, rune crafting to create the magic gear. This is the first time they involved that in it rather than crafting. I found that pretty interesting. But it's nothing you can invest for, of course. And in the end they mentioned the scrimshaw items for a new slot, but these are new so there's nothing to invest for really. The most you can do is look into what exactly these do and if it would uh, like really have a large effect on certain items in game. So first of all I'd like to show armor and for that I picked the Torva Plate Buddy. Now here's the regular uh, graph for the Torva Plate Buddy and as you can see here it's pretty stable for quite a long time and then here you've got this uh, flat graph and uh, like this flat part and then a pretty deep crash Now this is purely because the granite change itself didn't update for like a week or something all our graphs have this now and there's sadly nothing we can do about this it's just thanks to Jagex uh, messing up on the granite change now as you can see here it just shows how after the behind the scenes news post there's just a slight decrease a bit every day and if you compare it to the life graph, because these two guys look pretty similar, right? If you look at the prices on the left hand though, it's ranging from 100 to 300 mil here, and on the life graph it's ranging from 80 to 110 mil. And that is a massive difference, a lot of stuff happened in the meantime here. And here uh, Torva already crashed a lot on all the other next gear, and then on the day the update comes out, uh, you can get a like a small crash here, something like 8 mil, which is not much anymore compared to how much it went down in the first place. And after that there's always this inevitable rebounds uh, where it goes back up slightly, but it just can't hold because as time passes people expect more of the new armor to come out and thus it crashes even further. Now sadly I can't really show you guys any more uh, of the life graph because we only just got these next graphs. Uh, let me just show you guys here uh, on our page with the life prices if you click the next NSS button you go all the way down here and then you have spectral uh, you know just all the spirit shields you've got Zarid Bow, Virtus 1 and Virtus Book then you got full Virtus including the gloves and boots you got full Torva and you got full Pernix you can sort them all by name by high price uh, when they were last updated now let's just have a look at the Pernix graph here and you can just pretty much overlay it with uh, the Torvac graph here. Let me just go to the 7 day one. Yep. As you can see here, stable at a low price already until the update and then a crash and a few small, very small bounces, but just pretty much down quite a lot. Now let's go back and um, pick another one here. The Elysian Spirit Shield. Um, 7 day graph again. Yep, that's loaded. Now, this one rises, and a lot of people ask me, why are some spirit shields rising? Well, people were anticipating this update because Jagex had 85 plus gear, and gear might just include shields, and if there would be better shields than spirit shields, and spirit shields would be worthless. But the thing here is that uh, it became pretty clear that there were no shields involved in this update, and that's why spirit shields rose for a short while, made some pretty nice peaks, because uh, people made use of this knowledge and tried like bought them out just to make some nice profit and it worked out pretty well for these people and of course after that they're just back down again because people just hardly use shields in a game right now. Now I'm really glad we're finally offering Next and SS stuff and it's a pretty great addition there's quite a lot of items for different uh, wealth classes too and I think it's a great addition for flipping for short-term investing and I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. I hope you guys will too. Next up I wanted to talk about a bunch of supplies that were affected because of the skill requirements for this update. First of all adamant bars and uh, we recently added these to the lifecrafts too so I thought I'd show that. 
and it made some really nice rises. I invested in these two personally. I think I made about 300 mil on two accounts, which is pretty good. And uh, yeah, as you can see, they went to two, almost 2.9k each, starting at around 2.2. And uh, yeah, this is just a great rise simply because smithing would be the, the stuff you needed to make the melee gear. And that's just all you need, that tiny detail, and then you get a big rise like that. Next up, I wanted to show you guys mahogany planks. Now, I know these aren't related to the update directly, but I still wanted to include them because I like to show out of the ordinary stuff uh, that most people wouldn't think of either. Now, uh, mahogany planks, a lot of people thought these would be very essential in this update because everyone just thought it had a lot of to do with construction uh, as you can see here there's lots of fluctuation already rising before the update because of that special uh, BTS and then uh, here another pretty big rise right before the behind the scenes and when the behind the scenes itself comes out they crash to below 2k each starting from 2.6k and this is an immense crash and this is simply because there was no reference at all about construction and I guess this disappointed a lot of people and everyone lost faith in it too and yeah they just dumped and that was that no construction involved crash in price it really sucks for the people who invested because yeah Jagex did confirm it would be 91 construction oh well we move on to the next item which is the frost dragon bone now not everything that is mentioned in news posts is necessarily a good uh, investment item and frost dragon bones are an example of this you can see them crashing here for quite a while because of an overflow of supply due to bots and then after that they start rising up pretty quickly and this has to do with the update uh, with the player owned ports because Jagex mentioned that one of the requirements would be 90 prayer and you only needed one and prayer is sort of a useful skill in general so a bunch of people might have picked that and it might have something to do with bots being down now anyways, uh, to wrap the video up, I'd like to talk to you about patch notes. I haven't mentioned these in any video before yet, but patch notes are often released with uh, other updates, and uh, they're just a bunch of bug fixes really, and as you can see here, this time it's a massive list of uh, different fixes for quests, for mini games, uh, other random ones, and in this one there were quite a few interesting ones. first one here is the dark set effect has been lowered. Now, as you can see here, Darks was overpowered for some kind of reason. This is just a regular graph. And um, you can just watch them rise from 3.4 mil to se over 7 mil in the Grand Exchange. Now, to what prices they actually went, I'm not sure, but you can see this massive rise because it was overpowered. And now Jagex fixed it and it probably crashed back down really hard. On to uh, the next stuff. Let me just scroll through this here. Uh, right here, the Dominion Tower Gloves will now degrade correctly. This might make next gloves a bit more popular. Um, not really sure, that depends. And then you've got uh, the Blue Dragonite trimmed gold set is now available for free to play. So this is obviously going to rise because free to play doesn't have that much choice for their armors and things like that. And then when I scroll down a bit further through this pretty big list this time, uh, we come across the Armadale Coif now counts as an Armadale item in the God Wars engine. Now this is really no rocket science, it's it's pretty much child's play to invest in this and to make some quick money. Uh, if you don't have a lot of money then this could be a great investment item for you. You don't need a lot of money to make a quick investment. And then in the end, correcting the stats for the Ankh, now that is a really important one here. The Ankh was a free quest reward from uh, I think one of the desert quests, one of the latest ones with Prince Ali, and it uh, was an offhand magic weapon, but it had the highest bonuses in game. Now the Virtus book here is a level 80 item, and uh, the Anquest pattern in this item, and it was free. So yeah, that was quite a big issue, and uh, Jagex fixed this, and as you can see, the Virtus book instantly doubled in price. Uh, as soon as this came out. I usually always read these patch notes, but this time I didn't. Um, of course, this time there's something great. Now that pretty much wraps up this video. Um, there are some links in the description to other videos like the Rune Shark one, and uh, there's a link to our Facebook, to our free trial on merch. Feel free to check them out, and I'll see you guys soon.